we are going to have a look now at using the morph node to do morphing. If you haven't already seen the warping tutorial, I would suggest you take a look at that one first before you have a look at morphing, because there are a lot of similarities between the initial setup between the two, and we're going to be getting into some morphing specific details in this particular exercise. Okay, so if we take a look at the morph node, you can see it has two inputs. It has an A input and a B input. And the A input is where, where we're going to put our first source. And the B input is where we're going to put our second source. And if we take a look up at the view here, we can have a look at A, B, A over B, and wireframe, A warp, B warp, and the output, of course. As we create our morph, we're going to be looking through these different views as a way of speeding up the process. Whereas with morphing, we had source, target, and correspondence all within the same image. With morphing, we have a source, a target, and correspondence between the two images. But the setup is fairly similar between the two. And for this morphing overview, we're going to have a look at three specific things. We're going to be looking at the lips, we're going to be looking at the nose and we're going to be looking at the eyes and how we can get a good morph between those things. So the first thing we want to do is we're in a view. So we're seeing the A roll and I'm going to create my first shape. And as before, we'll start with the lips and this time I'm going to create one shape for the top lip and one shape for the bottom lip. And I'll call this one top lip. There we go. And create the bottom lip. So making sure that those shapes do not cross over. And I'll call this one bottom lip. So we'll leave that there for the second. Cool. So now we've created our shapes in the A roll. I'm going to duplicate these and put them in the B roll. So I can just have these selected. Control or Command D for duplicate. And then you can see here that currently these shapes are sat in A. If I click on them once, that now changes to show that they're sat in B and they disappear from our view. So if we change from our A view to our B view, we can now see them again. Excellent. So let's transform these into place. If I need to add another point, I can do that just by alt clicking with my reshape tool. And because of the way that the morph node works, I don't have to worry about having the exact same number of points between the source and the target shape as I do with other morphing filters. Let's just transform the bottom lip in. Again, alt click just to create another point if I need to. Cool, okay, so now I have my top lip and my bottom lip in the A and B views. So I have my source and my target. Let's change our view now to A over B, and we can see them both here. Now, as we did with the warping, we need to create a correspondence point between these two. So come from my source, over to my target, and then come from the source, over to the target. And let's see what this is going to do. So now, I'm gonna change the view to output, and let's add a few keyframes. So let's move us along to frame four and in the node i'm going to keyframe both the distortion and the transparency and come over to frame 15 and change the distortion up so this is going to make our warp for us and change our transparency up and this is going to move us between a and b so now if we play this back burp, burp, we can start to see we've got a little bit of a morph going on now it's not perfect, far from it in fact. You can see here, especially over on the right hand side, that our lips are starting to revolve a little bit as it sort of as it moves around. So we're getting a twisting going on with the lips. As we saw with the warping, that is because of the correspondence points that we have. So if I click on the correspondence point and go to bottom lip here, because we know that the source and the target are always going to hit their mark and going along these correspondence points here, we can actually see quite easily where the problems are going to be. So if I add another correspondence point by all clicking on here, 
I can adjust that so we can see the correspondence points aren't going to be doing the same sort of twisting as they were doing previously. And I do the same for the top lip as well. You can see here again, we have some twisting going on. So if I add another correspondence point over here, and one down at the bottom, we can get a straighter line happening between these two without any of that same twisting. So if I turn my overlays off now, and just scrub through, we're still getting a little bit of the twisting. We can move these around so we we can move these around so we don't get that twisting anymore. Turn that overlays off again. And you see that's going in much, much nicer. Cool. Let's do the same thing with the nose. In fact, before I do that, what I can do is I can now put these inside a layer and I will call these ones lips. Just so we can clear up our object list a little bit, lock that up. Okay, create a new layer and I will call this one nose. And previously we were using closed shapes. Now we can use open shapes again with our nose. So we don't always have to use closed shapes or open shapes. We can mix, we can mix those up. So hit escape just to make that into a, an open shape. Lovely. Cool. And so that will be nose. Come down here one more time, duplicate this up and turn this into the B view. Lovely, and we'll transform this into place. And we need to reshape this just a little bit. I can use the number buttons on the top row to move us between A and B, two and three. Just to check that those are going to be all right. They're looking to be in around about the same sort of place. So we should be fine there. And then I can come into my A and B view using the number four and set my correspondence points. So it's always the same. It's source, which is in the A view, target, which is in the B view, and set our correspondence points. Then come into output, and let's see what's going on with that. Again, we can see that little twisting going on over there, so that's not lining up perfectly. So even in the uh, output view, I can even add another correspondence point here and move this around until things are beginning to line up a little bit nicer. Cool, and turn our overlays off now for a second, and we'll just scrub that through. Let's begin to look a little bit better. We've got some smooth transitions going on between those two. If you want to, we can even come in and do something with the nostrils. So I can have an open shape on the nostril, an open shape on the second nostril. So I call this nostril left and this one nostril right. Do the same thing as I did before. Duplicate these up, put them into the B view, come over into the B view and transform them into place. Come in, set our correspondence points between the two. So it's always source, target, correspondence. And let's take a little look at how that works. Much nicer. And again, we've got a much smoother way of animating between those two. Now, when it comes to the eye, the eye is actually quite complex. And let's see what happens if we just morph eye to eye. So come in and just draw a quick eye up. Make a new layer for this one. We will call this one eye left. Try and keep our stuff nice and neat. Eye left, duplicate that. Stick that into B. Come in, transform this into place. Cool, then set our correspondence point one more time. Source, target, correspondence. See if that's going to work. Come into the output. Play that through.
Okay, so the eye shape itself is looking all right, but look at all the other stuff that's around it. So especially the uh, the iris and the pupil, that's all just looking not great. It's just transitioning between the two, rather than distorting and morphing between the two. See, look there, it would go 50%. This here should still be absolutely clear, as if we were just moving the eyeball. So that's not that's not great. We need to fix that. And we can easily do that. What we need to do is we need to set up a couple of new open shapes. And the reason we're doing open shapes on this is so that we can take into account the differences between what we can see on the iris on this view and what we can see on the iris on this view. So the eye is quite shut here and it's a bit more open on this here. So by using an open shape that stays within the eye shape itself, we can avoid issues with folding and the, the effect not looking very good. So here we will call this one iris left, left, left eye on the left side, and make a new one here, escape to close that, and make a new one, and put that on the same side. We will call this one iris left, right, iris left hand eye, right hand side, and I'm going to do one more shape that is going to be for the pupil. And again, avoid going over and overlapping the overall eye shape. Pupil, left. Cool. Well, let's take these three new shapes, duplicate them up, put them into B and have a look at the B view. Cool, and then just transform them into place. And there we go. Okay, cool, so we've got our source, we've got our target, what do we need to do now? Yep, correspondence. So it's nice, on the keyboard shortcut, we can just go two to the A view, three to the B view, four for the A to B. So it's actually a quite a nice little trigger to go through and do it that way because then we know that we've got everything in the right area. There we go, and there, lovely. Right, one to go have a look at the output and let's see what we've got now. And that's much nicer. So we've actually got the iris now, instead of just dissolving between the two eyes, we've got it also warping there as well. Now, if we want to make this transition a little bit better, what do we do? Yep, we're going to take our precision, which we've kept in draft to uh, aid the speed of working, and we can take that to normal or to better mode, and that will help to just improve the transition between the two shapes. Obviously, not counting the shapes themselves, because those are always going to hit their target. They're always going to be absolutely spot on where you place them. And using those same principles, we can work on the other eye and start to work on the face as well and begin to build up our morph. And that's our quick overview of morphing within the morph node in Silhouette V6.